we are the people of Abraham. The Prophet وسلم, came, the Quran says he was not an innovator. He did not bring a new message. He was renewing the ancient path of Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, Our father Ibrahim السلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him that he came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. بِقَلْبٍ salim. Ibrahim السلام, came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. From the time he was a young boy, he recognized the falsehoods of the society he lived in. This is for our youth should know this, that Ibrahim as a young boy saw through the illusions that were uh, operative in his society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about when he saw them worshipping their idols, he said, أَتَعْبُدُونَ قَالَ أَتَعْبُدُونَ مَا تَنْحِتُونَ وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ do you worship what your own hands are making when it's Allah who created you and what you do? He created your actions. He gave you the ability to act. So Ibrahim السلام, saw through the false idolatry of his time. And Muslims in every age, the people of submission, whether they were Christian or Jew at their time, whoever they are. And now we believe that it's the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They're people that are told to see through the illusions of the time they live in. To not be fooled by the time. To not be fooled by what people put their priorities in. Ibn Atayillah says, if you want to know where you stand with God, look where God stands with you. If you want to know where you stand with God, look where God stands with you. Where have you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your list of priorities? Because Ibrahim said, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillah. That my prayer, my ritual, my life and my death are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his priority. Inni dahibun ila rabbi sayahdeen. I'm going to my Lord and he will guide me. Allahu akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walilah alhamd. Inni dhahibun ila rabbi sayahdeen. I am going to my Lord and he will guide me. And then he asked Allah, Rabbi habli min as salihin Give me a child, a, a, a son amongst the righteous. Fabasharnahu bi ghulam and halim. So we gave him glad tidings of a forbearing youth. Halim which is the essence of the character of Ibrahim and of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كَانَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أَحْلَمَ النَّاسِ He's Ibn Ismail, he's the son of Ismail, in the dominant opinion. The Muslims differed, our ulama differed whether the, the son was Ismail or Ishaq, and it's a valid difference, but the dominant opinion is it's Ismail alayhi wa sallam. But it should not ever be a contention with the Jews who claim that it was Ishaq. Because many of the Sahaba thought that it was also Ishaq. The Ibrahim السلام, asked Allah to give him a child and Allah gave him Ismail السلام. And then he said, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ سَعْيَهُ When he reached his full power and strength, he said to him, قَالَ إِنِّي قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى I have had a vision that I'm to sacrifice you. Tell me what you think. This differs from the biblical narrative where uh, in the biblical narrative Isaac is not told. He's just told they're going to sacrifice a ram. And Ibrahim, when he asked Ibrahim where the ram is, he says, uh, it, will, it will be there. But in our narrative, he asked the child. And in one uh, riwayah, he was seven years old, in another, he was 12. But the point is, he was a young boy, and Ibrahim is asking him, tell me what you think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ismail said to him, he said, if'al, Ya abati, if'al ma tu'mar. My father, do what you're told. Do what you're told. Satajiduni, insha'Allah, min al-sabirin. You will find me amongst those who show patience. Allahu Akbar. 
This is an extraordinary story of submission. أَسْلَمَا When they entered into that state of submission, وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ and he put him down on his side and was ready to sacrifice him. In a riwayah, he actually, the knife went down, but it didn't cut his throat. When he was in that absolute, the two of them were in a complete state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَدَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا Ibrahim." Then we called them and we said, O oh, Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا you believe the vision that you saw. You believe the vision that you saw. قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَارِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And like this, we reward the people of Ihsan. The people of Ihsan. And so Ibrahim is then what? He's given a replacement. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِمْحٍ عَظِيمٍ He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ This is the clear and manifest tribulation. No greater tribulation than this. And no one after Ibrahim will ever be asked to make a sacrifice of that magnitude. No one. No one. Until the end of time, no one will be asked to make a sacrifice of that magnitude. But that is the magnitude of the sacrifice of the, of the man who is our exemplar. This is the Millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, who gave up everything. The son of Ibrahim, who gave up everything. He gave his position up. He gave his aristocratic position amongst his people. He gave everything up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave his wealth up. He expended all of his wealth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wife Khadija alayhi salam expended all of her wealth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was persecuted. He was spit on. He was scoffed. He was mocked. He was laughed at. He was, uh, had animal entrails thrown on him. Lies were told about him. All of these things, and still he was absolutely patient. Satajiduni insha'Allah min al sabirin. The Prophet ﷺ was not only patient, he was grateful. Ibrahim alayhi salam, our exemplar in Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ibrahim, inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah, that Ibrahim was a ummah. Qanitan, in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Walillah alhamd. In obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hanifan. Walam yakum min al mushrikeen. He was a Hanif inclining naturally towards his Lord, towards the truth. He had natural inclinations towards the truth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Was shakiran li an'umihi. اشتباهو واشتباهو وهداهو. He was grateful for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. Allah chose him. Allah guided him. This is our exemplar, Ibrahim alayhi salam. My question to myself and all of you, where is Allah in your lives? Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your lives? What are you willing to sacrifice for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This day should be a day in which you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to assume all of you are praying, but if there's somebody in here not praying, commit today from this day forward. Don't miss a prayer. Inna sarati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillah. My prayer is for the sake of God. You don't pray for your parents. You pray for them as dua, but your salah is not for your parents. Your salah is not for your masjid. Your prayer is not for anybody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not praying, then pray. There's people that come to the Eid who don't pray during the rest of the year. So this is a time for you to renew your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is the ancient path. This is a path that this society and all societies around the world are turning their back on. People are becoming completely immersed in worldly things. Everything is about dunya. Everything is about pleasure. Everything is about luxuria. Luxury is not the goal in life. The people closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Qiyamah and in the Akhirah are the people 
who left the dunya for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the things that you have, but it's all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't pursue the worldly things for the sake of pleasure. You pursue them for the sake of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by providing for your family, by taking care of their needs, by supporting the community, by giving out, by charity, by thinking of other people. There's economic crises. There's people that have lost their jobs. There's 300,000 Americans losing their jobs every month. And this crisis, according to many of these prognosticators, say that it's going to get worse, it's not going to get better. It's still the same Lord. We don't worship the Lord of prosperity. We worship the Lord of prosperity and hardship. In hard times and in easy times, we worship the same Lord. You should be as close to God in easy times. In fact, you should be more afraid. The Sahaba were more afraid during easy times than hard times because they knew that hard times would always follow easy times, but easy times would always follow hard times. So when they were in hard times, they were in intidhar al-faraj. The Prophet ﷺ said, intidhar al-faraj min al-ibadah. That to wait for the opening from God is a type of worship when you're expecting good things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to expect good things from your Lord. All of the naysayers out there, all of the people that are scaring people, that's the way of Iblis. We're the people of optimism. The Prophet sallallahu loved optimism. He was an optimistic person. He never looked on the dark side. He never looked at the bleakness of the situation. He always knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with him. And this is the difference between the people of hope and the people of despair. La tayasu min Don't despair from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not despair from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillah alhamd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah is vast. His rahmah is so vast that if it opened up for us, we would be completely insane. If we could see the reality of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, we would lose our minds. We, the veiling that Allah has given us is a blessing from Allah. It is a rahmah that we're veiled in the dunya from the realities. Because people that have too many unveilings end up walking around on the streets talking to themselves. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. You should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a blessing to be a Muslim in any time. Whether you are a Muslim with Hud, whether you are a Muslim with uh, Salih, whether you are a Muslim with Shu'ib, with Musa, whether you are a, a, a Muslim with Jesus, all of these times, it was a good time to be a Muslim. But this is the best time to be a Muslim. This is the best time to be a Muslim. Because you are a Muslim in the time of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Habibullah, Mujtaba, Al-Mukhtar, Al-Hadi, Al-Siraj Al-Munir, Al-Siraj Al-Wahaj. He is the illuminating lamp. If you follow the Prophet, you will never go astray. You will never go astray. But you have to find out who your prophet is. You have to learn about him. You have to teach your children to love your prophet. The Prophet ﷺ, the more you learn about him, the more overwhelmed you get by his blessing. I was made to love three things in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet said, my love from this world was made from the love of women. The Prophet ﷺ, our ulama say, this is in no way to be understood in a sensual sense. The Prophet loved the, the mercy of women. He loved the charity of women. He loved the, the, the easiness of women. He loved the selflessness of women. He loved those qualities that the women have, that this religion elevated. Before the Prophet Muhammad, the Arabs didn't know how to treat their children with kindness and love. The men wouldn't kiss their children. The Arabs were gruff people. They were people that saw to kiss a child was beneath them. When the Prophet ﷺ kissed the child and Habis ibn al-Aqra said, أَتُقَبِّلُ الْأَوْلَادِ Do you kiss children? He said, نَعَمْ أُقَبِّلُ الْأَوْلَادِ Yes, I kiss children in front of other men. In front of other men. And he said to him, I have ten children, I've never kissed one of them. He said, I have nothing in my religion for a man who has no mercy in his heart. 
This religion is about rahmah. The Prophet elevated the women. We have to elevate our women. We have to elevate our women, honor our women. لا يكرمهن إلا كريم ولا يهينهن إلا لئيم. No one honors women except honorable people, and no one degrades them except violent, contemptible people. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his khutba on the day of Nahar, he said, أتدرون أي يوم هذا؟ Do you know which day this is? قلنا الله ورسوله أعلم. Allah and His Messenger know best. فَسَكَتَ حَتَّى ظَنَنَّ أَنَّهُ سَيُسَمِّيهِ بِغَيْرِ اسْمِهِ And then we were silent until we thought that the Prophet was going to change the name of the day. And the Prophet said, قَالَ أَلَيْسَ يَوْمَ النَّحَرُ Isn't this the day of Nahar? They knew the, the day, but when the Prophet asked a question, لا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنِ يَدَيْ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ Don't put out what you think you know in the presence of the Messenger of Allah or God. So, the Prophet said, ثُمَّ قَالْ أَيُّ شَهْرًا هَذَا قُلْنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ فَسَكَتَ حَتَّى ظَنَنَّا أَنَّهُ سَيُسَمِّيهِ بِغَيْرِ اسْمِهِ Then he asked, which month is this? And then he, uh, they said, Allah and His Messenger know best. And he was silent until they thought he would change the name. And then he said, أَلَيْسَ هَذَا ذُو الْحِجَّةِ Isn't this ذُو الْحِجَّةِ? And they said, yes, this is ذُو الْحِجَّةِ And then he said, أَيُّ بَلَدٍ هَذَا Which city are we in? And they said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Look at the iman of these people. They knew they were in Mecca. But if the Prophet's asking, which city are you in? They're not going to answer. Because they don't know it might be a different city now. And so, سَكَتَ حَتَّى ظَنَنَّ أَنَّهُ سَيُسَمِّهِ بِغَيْرِ اسْمِهِ And he said, أَلَيْسَتْ بِالْبَلَّةَ الْحَرَامِ Isn't this the sacred city, the sanctuary? قُلْنَا بَلَا قَالَ فَإِنَّ دِمَاءُكُمْ وَأَمَارِكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ حَرَامْ كَحُرْمَةِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا فِي شَهْرِكُمْ هَذَا فِي بَلِدِكُمْ هَذَا إِلَى يَوْمِ تَلْقَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ أَلَا هَلْ بَلَّقْتُ قَالُوا نَعَمْ قال الله مشهد فليبلغ الشاهد الغائب فربا مبلغ أو عام سامع فلا ترجع بعد كفارا يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said this, from this day forward, the, your blood amongst you, your property is sacred. It's sacred. Like the sanctity of this day, in this month, in this city, until the day you meet your Lord. And then he said, have I not delivered this message? And they said, yes. And he said, oh Allah, bear witness that I delivered this message. And then he said, let the one present tell the one absent. Let the one present Tell the one absent. <coughs> Muslims have a responsibility to tell people. And, and we have forgotten this responsibility. And I'll tell you something. You think there's enemies of Islam out there? You think they're forever enemies? In Sahih Muslim and Al-Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, Muttafaqun Ali, the Prophet وسلم, said, the people that hate this religion most become its strongest defenders once they enter into it. The people that have ashadunas karahiyatan lihad al amr. The people that hate this religion the most have the most zeal for it once they come into it. So if you think you see people out there that hate this religion, you should know that if they get the message, if Allah opens their hearts, they become the best defenders of this religion. So don't despair of people. Good people or bad people, don't despair of people. This is Allah's creation. These are all these people walking around here. They're, 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 they have every permission to be here. God brought them into the world and only God's authority can take them out of the world. إِنَّ دِمَاءُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُكُمْ حَرَامٌ Blood and property are sacred. Blood and property are sacred. This is our teaching. It's a universal teaching. The blood of all these people in this country, in our estimation, in our religion's teaching, is sacred. And no one can shed that blood unless they have absolute authority from the government. Nobody. This is the beauty of our religion. Their property is sacred. You can't steal from them, whether it's a corporation or whether it's an individual. Property is sacred. And you should take those things seriously. There's a lot to do. Our ummah has a lot to do. My advice to all of you is make this day a renewal of your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. Make it a day of renewal. Make it a day of tawbah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah.